Good morning. Hello, hello. Let's get started. Good morning. Tanya, how are you? Good. And it's Monday. So that means we're hitting the ground running. It's President's Day. Hey, you know, some people still hustle. I was already at Harris Teeter buying stuff, so it was it was quite a <laughs> bread don't stop. Mm, yeah. All right. How was your open house yesterday? How did that go? Uh, with Irina, it, it went uh, good. At least she said she had five five people come in. Um, so not a bad follow up to to Saturdays, and she's gonna do a longer one on next week. So she's gonna oh, do nice. another one. She she wants to do twelve to three. So she wants to change the hours up because she thought it was too early in that neighborhood. Um, which you kind of experienced the exact same thing, right? Yeah. I've done a couple of neighbors' doors and they were kind of asleep. So um if anyone else wants to throw their um cameras on, feel welcome. So it's not just the two of us looking at each other. Um all right, so today we're we're actually talking about open houses. So funny, funny timing, huh? Um you guys see my screen? All right, so we're going to jump right into it. Today won't be a, a super long one, but again, today is uh, about holding successful open houses. You know, for, for newer agents, a lot of your business in the beginning is, is holding, holding open houses. So this is very important that you get comfortable doing this and you get comfortable talking to people right away. Um, and, and even if it's just, uh, you know, practice for you, it, it's great for, for you to get used to talking to to new people to walk them around the house to see how other experienced agents talk to agent or uh, talk to potential clients so um Tanya did a great job over the uh, last week of asking to co-host an open house with me and and we did that over the weekend um Kaylee did this uh, about a month ago uh, she was in rev up and and I mentioned that open house and she asked for it um, so if you guys see anyone having open house, we post it all the time in Facebook. Ask if you can if you can host it. Um, you know, if they're hosting one on Saturday, ask if you can co-host it. Or if you've, you know, you feel comfortable, ask if you can host one on your own the following day, right? Um, I, I really did that. I'll, she I had an open house on Saturday. She asked if she could do her own on Sunday. This the same house, which is perfectly fine, right? Um, it's easy for me to do. All I have to go into the do is to go into the MLS and set that up. It takes five minutes. Um, the more you guys do that, the, the better, the, the more expense you're going to get very quickly, but you'll see, and I'm, I'm looking at a list of, of leads that we got from Saturday. Um, so we're going to follow up with those leads and, and maybe we'll get something out of it. Um, a few of them had agents already, but again, it was, it was, a, I, I think a fairly successful open house. Um, so, um, don't be scared to ask for an open house. Is what I'm trying to say. So today's daily affirmation. Um, I am professional in every way in dress, manner, knowledge, and action. So look the look the part. All right. So today we're gonna go over the, the purpose of an open house, um, how to select the house for an open house, um, how to prepare for and increase your attendance and staging and setting up your office for the day. step-by-step -step method for meeting attendees um, and getting the appointment, converting prospects into clients and post open house protocol and, and follow-ups. Um, and that's, that's what I'm gonna be doing today is it's post open house on, on some of these leads that we got from Saturday. So again, the, there's, there's a lot of reasons, obviously the, the person who's listing it is would like to sell their house, right? But it's it's not just about selling that house, right? There's, there's a lot of other reasons why you hold an open house. Because a lot of times that you guys are holding open houses, they're not your listing, right? So your goal is to get leads, obviously. That's the number one thing. Whether they're buying that house, they buy 20 other houses. And Tanya probably heard me mention to every single person, if this isn't your house, that's fine. I'll show you other houses, right? And that's, that's the most important thing. So a lot of people... When they go to an open house to look at a home, they're kind of thinking, well, this person only does this house. So, for example, we met with a guy named Randy, 
And he was shocked that I could show him not only other houses in Huntersville, but anywhere in North Carolina. Um, so I explained to him several times that, hey, like if this is your house, cool, we'll move forward. If it's not, cool, I'll show you other houses in Mint Hill and Albemarle and other areas. Um, so that's, that's your main thing is lead generation. Obviously, you can get an offer on that house that you're currently at, and that's fantastic. But again, you are trying to meet people who are looking to buy, who do not currently have an agent that are looking to buy anywhere. Um, so that is your, your number one benefit. Is, um, you know how they jump to that conclusion, right? That you're just representing this house. Is it because um, if you were to be representing just a builder, then you would just be representing like the builder's houses and not necessarily showing them around? Yeah, I think I think that was an interesting situation just because we were in a brand new MI home, okay. right? I think I think it was, you know, maybe less likely if it was a, a, a 2006 house, right? Um, but even in cases where like it is not a brand new house, people still seem to think that for some reason. Um, but definitely in a brand new house, we I think we got asked that two or three times, like, do you work for the builder? Um, so it definitely was confusing in that situation. So that's why it's very important to let them know that you can sell them anything. And that's, you, you want to reiterate that a lot. So um, the second thing is exposure, right? Um, so, you know, as soon as we got to the house, you know, the first thing that, that I did and, and Tanya was doing was, was making videos and recording stuff. Um, so after the showing and, and during the open house, uh, we can post videos. Um, I went there the day before and I actually already had videos from the day before when I went out there. Um, so exposure, exposure is huge for this. Um, you know, lead generation and exposure are, are pretty much go hand in hand, right? Um, but posting, posting your flyers and posting stuff several days before obviously helps with attendance, but it also gets your name out there. Um, and again, the more often that you post on your social media that you do real estate, whether any one of your friends is particularly interested in that house in Huntersville that we did, doesn't really matter. They know that you're doing real estate. So you want to constantly be putting that in front of all your people. Um, because imagine that all your friends and family probably know 10 other realtors as well, right? So if you're constantly being on the top of their mind, it's going to be very helpful for you guys. Um, if done properly, they're obviously like agree. On next door, sorry. Do you post on like next door in that area or no? I do. Um, so I use, I use Boost, which is, you know, through uh, Realty One Group. Um, for all my listings and stuff like that. And there's an option to add that on next door. So I usually pay the little bit extra to, to boost it on there as well. Awesome. And when do you usually start um, letting people know or like how much in advance do you plan your open houses? So Is it usually the week of, or how do you do that? So with this one, I, I got the listing and I, it basically was going to do the open house the next week. So as soon as I got the listing, I went ahead and did an ad online on Facebook, next door, Instagram and that stuff. Um, but also put in MLS that Monday for that for that week. So um, it's a great question. It, a lot of times you'll have people that are gonna do an open house and they don't put it in the MLS until Friday. And unfortunately by then, you know, people have already done their searches. And I think the very first pre people that it came, they came from out of state, right? Um, that couple from Pittsburgh. And they had a list of houses they were going to see, right? So you want to try to have it in there. I think by you know Monday of that week of at the latest or Tuesday, but the sooner you get it in there, the better because people are literally making a whole, they're planning their whole day out. You know, this open house is from 10 to 12. So we got to do this one first. This open house is from three to four. So they're trying to plan out their whole week. Uh, so the sooner you put it in there, the better and the more traction it gets. That. know that the open house is going to be productive i kind of came into that open house saturday saying it might not be productive because i was like you know because you you know this is your first time doing it so i was like oh uh, you know the expectations it, it can be tough for someone this brand new um because it had been on the market for almost 100 days um previously on, on as for so by owner um but it ended up being very productive and again even if honestly even if only one person came up it would have been a productive two hours with you just you know just you being there and, and, and hosting it thankfully you know we had about 10 people that came through but um yes attitude is is, is everything um plan prepare know the market um you know 
this was a brand new homes. Um, I should have done a little bit more work on knowing the other models and knowing the model stuff, uh, which I, I spoke to the owner as, as soon as you pulled out Saturday, Tanya, I got the owner on the phone and she emailed me all her in my home plans, uh, all the upgrades that she made to it. Um, so I can send to those other people. So um, if we have another one, I'll have all that information available up front. But um, you definitely want to know the neighborhood. Um, you know, the, the first question everyone asked was, is this an older neighborhood or is it everything brand new, right? So we were getting that right off the bat. So um, dressed professionally. Um, I thought we both dressed uh, appropriately. I don't usually overdress. I'm not usually wearing a, wearing a suit in it because I want to kind of relate to the people. But um, obviously, I'm not wearing flip-flops and uh, jean shorts. Uh, but you definitely want to look, look the part and look, look nice. Jackie, have you held an open house? I have not. We gotta get you. We gotta get you on one. The next time you see one on 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 the, our Facebook group chat, ask about it for sure. Um, great way to great way to get you out there. Got it. I'll definitely make that something I do soon. For sure, and that's that's kind of what this one is. You know, selecting the property to hold it, hold an open house. You know, obviously, as a new agent, you don't you don't really always get to select that, right? Um, you know, for for Tanya, this one was an hour from her house, so maybe not maybe not something she would have ideally selected, right? Um, but that just happened to be where the open house was, right? So um, sometimes, as a new agent, you're at the mercy of where the listings are, right? Um, which which it is what it is. So I mean, obviously, if if you can choose the ideal location, it's your next door neighbor's house. You know the neighborhood, you know the comps, you know all that good stuff, but um, unfortunately, you don't always get to do that. And then, obviously, if it's your if it's your own listing, then you're going to do an open house because of because of that. Um, and there are some houses that you're probably not going to do an open house on, right? Just depending on the the shape of the house that, that's it and the price point, right? Um, so we don't always do open houses on everything, um, but selecting property is kind of out of your control sometimes. But um, yes. Invest in personalized yard signs. Um, we had several of those out. I had three in the neighborhood that are open house signs, kind of just like the one you out you see out there. And then I also had my regular for sale sign that was also in the yard. Um, and I did it kind of in the neighborhood. You had to turn five or six times. So I had it kind of showing them where to turn and then one at the house. So they knew where to where to pull up to, which is which is very helpful because even though people have GPS, you know, they're in the neighborhood, they're looking at other houses. And oftentimes there's more than one house for sale in that neighborhood. So you want to make sure that they're going to the right house. I've done that before and I've had people do that as well. It's stopping going to other people's houses. Um, so make sure that you have them coming to the right house. Um, what do you think is different, um, Jackie or Maisha or Carlos on, on a a vacant versus occupied house when you're doing an open house. What's what are some things that might be different? Um, a vacant versus um the other one. You basically have an event where you can basically you schedule showings when you pretty much want to versus like someone being there. You may have to ask them when can you show the house. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So a little bit, a little bit different. What about, what about staging and things? Um, what's, what's, which one has the advantage? Occupied. Yeah. The occupied home. Yeah. So they, they both have, you know, pros and cons, right? So the, the vacant house, the, the house that I did on, on Saturday was, was vacant, right? So some, some people like seeing that, but some people might've liked seeing how to decorate that house because it's a pretty large house and it's, the upstairs media room, I have no idea what to put in there. You put an airplane hanger in there, it was so big, but it, but seeing furniture in there might've been cool. I personally kind of like stuff vacant, but um, so having an occupied house, it, it's it's not a con, right? Um, what are what are some negatives about an occupied house? I'm trying to hold it open house. Might not be clean, right? Um, you know the vacant house is pretty pretty simple. It's 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 cleaner than I was. I mean, house is like spotless, right? Um, the occupied house. You know, when you're holding an open house, you you want, really want to 
encouraging coach them throughout the week like hey like have you done this have you done this um so you don't really know the condition what do you usually tell like the owners if it's an occupied house and you notice that there's like kind of like it's pretty cluttered or it could be like a hazard to people trying to walk through yeah i mean you just have to tell them i mean there's there's definitely been times where i've had to like close doors off and not because it was so messy in certain areas or like the garage for example and or maybe their teenage son's room is just just a hygiene mess and you can't go in there um so you you those are definitely some obstacles that you have to work around is is make sure that they've cleaned up enough that you can actually do it right um so obviously if it's your listing then you're more control of that right like you can actually talk to those people if it's not your listing and you're holding an open house for someone else hopefully hopefully that person is kind of letting them know uh because you're you're typically if it's not your listing you're typically showing up the day of the open house and just being there right so you're going to be kind of walking into a surprise so um but yeah so occupied houses like how how clean is it going to be right um can you send like um can you do like a like a checklist for them kind of like helpful tips of how as an owner to get ready for an open house and kind of mention things in there customized to kind of their situation yeah so we definitely we definitely have a checklist that we can send to them which is you know very helpful and you know vacuum you know take all the stuff off if you want you know personalized stuff down um take your guns out um which is, is a huge one. You know, we're in the South, you know, sometimes people like display guns everywhere. Um, let's put those away. Cause we're going to have sometimes kids walking through. Um, I don't think we had any kids Saturday, did we? Which is kind of odd. A lot of times you're going to have like young kids running through. So um, that's, that's pretty common. Um, what are some other issues? So occupied houses, getting the owners out, right? Um, sometimes you have owners that, that say they're going to leave and they want to stick around. Right. Um, our, our showing our open house on Saturday was from 11 to one, right? Um, ideally, you know, if I'm holding open houses occupied, you leave for the day, right? Or leave, you know, 10 to two, right? Give me an, a whole hour before so I can set up and then give me a whole hour afterwards. Um, so I left, I left Saturday probably around 135 when I finally left the house. Um, there wasn't a, a ton to do. I was mainly on the phone with the, with the seller, but um, so give yourself an hour before an hour after, make sure they're gone from the house, make sure they're not sitting in the car in the driveway, which I've seen people try to do. They're not, you know, walking around outside. They're not trying to peep on who's coming in their house, like get them out of the house, right? Have plans, go, go to lunch, be gone for the day. Um, you, you don't, you don't want people there. Um, what about, what about vacant house? What are, what are some maybe potential negatives for a vacant house? But vacant house, a lot of times, if you if you guys start when you guys start showing a lot more house, some of you walk into a house that hasn't been lived in for a couple of days, it it stinks, right? Um, you know, again, this is this happens to be a brand new house, so we, we didn't have that issue when people have been in and out of it. But you know, vacant houses have have different issues. They also have heating and cooling issues, right? Because usually the seller is not going to leave, you know, during the summer the AC on sixty eight degrees, so it's nice and comfortable in there. Um, so if you show up at 11 o'clock the day of showing and that house is 80 degrees in there, you're not going to have a good, you're not going to have a good showing. In our case, it was, it was chilly, right? So the heat's not on and you walk in there and it's cold, people are not going to stay long, right? So I, I went to this house the day before, um, made sure the temperature was correct. So that we went in there, everything was, was nice, right? Had it been stagnant in there, I would have left, I would have stayed there for a couple hours, left the windows open and, and let it air out. Um, but those are some things you want to think of in advance um, to to make sure that you're not just walking into whatever situation you have. So if you have the opportunity to see the house the day before, always a good idea. And I always go the day before to drop stuff off, to drop off cookies and flyers. And I couldn't do balloons because it was windy Saturday, but um, to drop off stuff. But you also you want to get eyes on it in advance if, if possible. Um, Weekends for week versus weekdays. Um, almost all open houses seem to be on the weekends, right? We've had a lot of agents literally when we have success doing it on a Friday afternoon, right? Um, doing it during the week. Sometimes that's the best, the best for people. Uh, you know, everyone's schedule is completely different. Just because you're typically off on Saturday doesn't mean everyone else is. So 
Uh, if you've got a house that's been tough to sell and um, it's in a busy neighborhood, Friday afternoons are perfect, right? Because everyone's home from, from work. Um, I got a note on my door, um, I guess a couple of weeks ago, and it was like a just, just taped to my door, like on a Tuesday or Wednesday. And it said Friday afternoon, tacos and tequila, open house. And it was like three doors from my own house. And it was like, cool. Like everyone in my cul-de-sac was like, Brian, is this you? Like, um, cause they wanted to my agent right here, but no, unfortunately, uh, that neighbor does not know me and I use someone else. But anyways, like a super cute idea, like tacos and tequila Friday afternoon for an open house. Um, and everyone in the neighborhood knew about it, was excited about it because, because of the way they did it. So, um, you know, out of the, out of the box stuff like that works very well. And Friday afternoon, that house was popping. So, um, I actually don't know if it's under contract or not, but, um, it, it was a very busy open house. So open house signs, you know, we've already, we've already talked about that. Um, obviously your, your business cards, um, info about the area, buyer handbooks, personalized marketing materials and property disclosures if available. Um, a lot of times for, for a house that's not brand new, I'll have the property disclosures printed out so people can take them. Um, you know, property disclosures, oil, mineral, gas, lead-based paint. So if people are super interested, they can go and have that stuff if they like. Uh, as far as like personalized material, we had, I created this in R1 marketing and I had this printed out um nice glossy on on you know double-sided and i had this you know kind of spread out over the counter so when they came in uh tanya was handing this to everybody um and it it looks good i thought um wasn't wasn't too over the top but just kind of a simple you know double double-sided uh page um so if they like the house they they've got the address written down um they've got my information right here um, and then I also had my business card spread out on the counter as well. So they had my business card, they had my flyer. Uh, so they definitely had my information to, to get a hold of me. Um, so very, very important that you give them something to reach back out to you on, right? Um, no, the flyers were really good. You did a good, good. job. Thank where you. do you order them from? Like, where do you get them printed? Um, them so I actually just use staples. Um, this is the staples right here um, in Huntersville that, that I use all the time so um usually they have stuff done almost same day so i usually just a couple of days before send them over have them printed go pick them up and, and drop them off um uh, something else that's not on here it might be on one of the next pages i forgot but um i also had a sign up sheet right so i had an app on my ipad um so when people came in we got them to kind of before we even got started we got their name what brings them in and then uh tanya actually did a much better job than i normally do of getting them to sign in so she she forced them to sign in which is which is really good because you you want that information um so yeah so we got quite a few people that are that, that signed in and they put their their phone number email address obviously their name um where their current house is and are they working with an agent so those are kind of the five different things that i that i asked for um at an open house so um might have to do tweak you, some of it because it did take a while for some of those people to sign in, I thought. Yeah. Do you have like an app that you use for that sign in on your iPad or is that something that you created yourself? No, no, it, it's an app. Uh, it's called Open Home Pro. Okay. Um, actually, Realty One Group actually has a um, open house app. I just haven't used it before. I actually just saw it the other day. Um, so I'll try to ask Amanda for that because uh, I'd rather use that one because that one would go straight into your CRMs. That is awesome. Which yeah, would be I'll much better. Ask her about it. Yeah. So that would be much better. So I just I just saw something about that. I haven't personally used it, but I'm sure I'm I'm sure if it's through Realty One Group, it's it's done right. Um I actually don't don't love this app that I use. Um it was it was a little it was a little slow, but also the service there was terrible, the the cell service. So that that could have been part of it. Um the internet, whatever. Um but yeah, so make sure you have as much of this this stuff as you can. Um, so you're able to clipboard sign up sheets, right? So that's that's what we had. Um, house up installed. So we we had that um, bottled water uh, table with chairs if vacant. Um, 
we didn't we didn't have table and chairs. Um, I thought you know standing at the the one of the two islands was was more than good enough, and uh, really wasn't a situation where people were going to be sitting down and hanging out um, if they weren't touring it. Uh, there are times you might want to bring a pop up table depending on on what you have or bring chairs. Um, Irina actually she brought chairs on Sunday for hers, um, and she actually is left the chairs there because she's going back this next Sunday for her open house. So. She actually is bringing chairs to her, right? So she's she does hers a little bit differently than I do mine, um, which is good, right? Um, so everyone does theirs a little bit differently. Um, yeah, and this is th this is just kind of what you should be doing in advance. And again, if it's not your if it's not your listing, you know, kind of pretend like it is. Like know know the MLS stuff. Go in the MLS, print the MLS sheet off, like know as much information about it as you can so you're not not bugging the host but you should know a lot of it and, and you did a good job of, of, of knowing the stuff before you came out there right um i mean it was, you knew as much as as much as i did about it so knowing that it's, it's going to be good because you're going to get asked real quickly how many bathrooms is it and if you're stuttering around they're gonna they're gonna know right um so you want to you want to kind of be comfortable with the house and, and talking to people And it was it was helpful because I would listen to how you answer their questions and then I would just piggyback off of that. Like, where does the property line end, you know, or whatever. So I would like would just reference whatever you said. I don't know, but I just right. read what you said. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's a, that's a good thing. It's just kind of listen to how how I talk to people already. You you have very good people skills already, which is which is great. Um, but just kind of answering the the basic questions, you know, just listen to the the person that you're with and and then just kind of just literally just follow them around. Um so door knocking, uh, you did a little bit of that about that before. Um, you know, sometimes your neighbor is going to be the best people to help you sell a house, right? So this, again, this neighborhood happens to be brand new homes, and which is fine. But there's a lot of neighborhoods that, like my neighborhood that's built in 2014, where people are like always wanting to move in this neighborhood. So knocking on the neighbors, like, oh my god, my my sister's cousin's been dying to move in here. Uh, my friends told me the next time the house comes available to let them know. So knocking on the neighbors can be a absolute great way to, to get people in. And they might not be able to come to the open house that day, but you don't really care. Because again, remember, you're trying to get new leads. You're trying to find new clients, right? Obviously, the end goal is if you sell that house, that's great. But at, it, in your mind, it's to get as many leads as you can, right? Um, so knocking on the neighbors, you know, an hour before, um, Usually, if I'm going to do it, I do it the day before. So I always go out the evening before when I put my signs out. Um, and that's normally when I door knock is to let them know that, hey, tomorrow we're having an open house. And then if there's a couple of houses that I knocked on on Friday evening that didn't answer, then I'll re-knock on those Saturday morning and see if they come out. Um, so that's a great way to, to get more people um, and, and to get awareness. And to get them to move cars that are parked in front of your house. <laughs> All right, so we already talked about um, flyers, um, posts on internet sites. Um, the, you know, thankfully, the MLS does that for us, right? So when I when I put it in MLS, it goes automatically to, to ZillowRealtor.com. And that's where most, most of those people have found it, right? They're just searching their favorite place, Zillow, and they're looking for open houses on Saturday, and we, we popped up in there. Um, so again, that's why you want to have that in advance so people can plan their weekends uh, around your open houses um, and not not just miss it. Uh, one of the guys actually just had, he actually left the movie theater to come see our open house. Um, so he just happened to see it. Um, but a lot of time people are looking in advance. Um, boost ads on Facebook, which is what I mentioned before. Um, that's always super, super helpful to do. And if it's your listing, you're going to do that anyways. Um, you know, you might you might not do that if it's not your personal listing. Um, you know, pay money to boost ads on Facebook. But if it's your if it's your specific listing, then you you probably will. Um, but what you should be doing is if you have an open house uh, that you're going to is is you know, I probably should have shared that that flyer with you so you could have posted on your social media uh, in advance, right? So that would be be helpful in advance. Post up like, hey, open house this weekend. Uh, come on out and see me. Hang out. Um, it, it helps get the, helps get the traction. And 
we've kind of already talked about this a few times. Um, plan for your open houses. Make sure that you are are ready um, conducting the open house. Um, open house. Here's one of our checklists um, that we use. Just, you know, make sure that you have it set up before door knock um, signage during the during it and then then afterwards um so today will be big for the afterwards so these six leads that we that we got uh, i think we probably had around 10 people i guess around six people filled out that um so i'll follow up with all, all six of those even the people that say that yes they have an agent um surprisingly they, that doesn't mean they've all signed with an agent right so they might have an agent that they know they've been kind of working with but um they might not have an exclusive agency agreement with them but um, I'll reach out to all of them regardless and say thank you for coming out. And if they say, well, I'll have my agent contact you, then great. Um, if not, they say, you know what, actually, I liked you guys. You know, can can I work with you? So that that happens as well. And a lot of people will say they have an agent when maybe they really don't because they don't want that pressure of you trying to get them to sign something. So know that as well. So just because somebody says that doesn't mean that they actually do. Consider a partner for safety, um, so especially for your first couple of open houses. You're, you're probably not going to be holding the open house by yourself, um, but but know the neighborhood. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having an accountability partner, a, another person there for you, because. You know, people are crazy. Um, we had a kind of a weird. <laughs> Danya had a weird person upstairs. Um, that was probably harmless enough, but I mean, you know, if you were there by yourself, that, that might've stressed you out, you know? Um, so it, it, it definitely doesn't, it definitely doesn't help. Right. Cause you're going to get all kinds of characters coming in and out of the house and you, you never really know. So, um, let people know that you're doing an open house, let them know what you're at before. Right. So if your husband or wife isn't going to be there, obviously then let them know, Hey, this is the address I'm going to, this is where I'm going to be at. Um, if you can obviously have someone there with you, that's that's always great. Uh, it never helps, never hurts to have a second agent, right? Because either you're gaining experience, or you've got someone else there that's got experience or gaining experience. Um, so it's always super helpful for that. And then keep your phone on you if you're by yourself, right? Um, I'd say we have my phone, you know, either one of us usually had our phone sitting down with some kind of um, music on or something. Uh, but if you're by yourself, keep that phone on you at all times, just in case something pops up. So um, always, always be, be safe. Always arrive early. Always get the lights on. That house on Saturday had a million lights. The open house I did a couple weeks before, the million dollar house in South End, and the lights were the most confusing lights I've ever seen. It takes me 20 minutes to get them on. It takes me 40 minutes to get them off because they all turn each other on and off in different parts of the house. Um, have everything on. Um, you're not always going to mess with their their air, but if it's hot and you know or cold, then you know do something about that. Um, a lot of times, I'm going to open the blinds, uh, move things around. Um, obviously, you're not going to redecorate their house, but getting get it look the the best it needs to look, um, and, and hopefully they're helping you do that before. They say stuff, meet, meet and greet them, right? Um, the second they came in, I wasn't trying to hover over them like a used car salesman, but it was instantly like, it's me, this is, you know, this is, or, or her, like, this, this is our open house. Thank you for coming in. And usually my, what question, my, one of my first questions is what brings you in, right? Um, and they'll, they'll usually tell you pretty bluntly, really quick, like why they're there, or I'm just, I'm next door, I'm just being nosy, or um, we're moving, we're moving down from, Pittsburgh and we're going to be moving to hopefully the Charlotte area you know just what brings you in really quickly if you don't mind go ahead and sign in and then and then at once you get them signed in then you kind of start building that rapport and then you know figure out what kind of personality they have like do you think they want to be held hand, hands and, and walked around uh, or should you just let them go on their own um, ideally you kind of walk around with them um, maybe not side by side all the time but but Sometimes people want that. So, I mean, just try to figure that out from them. Um, yeah. So make sure you're engaging with them right away. 
um, give them give them the flyer right away. Um, let them explore. Um, you know that that one couple that was there for like thirty five minutes. They they asked me if they should explore on their own. I said I'm happy to show you, and they said yes. But we prefer that, right? But they didn't want to they didn't want to assume that I would just do that, right? So um, yeah, just just you you should be able to fill them out. Like that one guy that you went upstairs with, like I was just kind of like. Me and him are not really uh, doing well. I'm just going to let you do your own thing. And then, yeah. Um, and then confirm contact info received. Um, yeah, so just make, make sure that they're filling out their information. Um, I have a question. I have a yeah. question. You know how, like, in MLS, we don't necessarily put in, like, walking distance to the park or things like that, right? But um, if people start asking, like, is there a park nearby? Like, I have a dog. Or is there, like, any kind of whatever trails or is that information that we should have and we disclose it like when we're talking about like the nearest school or whatever? Yeah, for sure. I and, and that I I didn't know much about this neighborhood because it's it's so new. Um, but yeah, I mean, normally I would have that in my details, like you know, I have a listing is, is walking distance to Target, right? And there's a park down the street. I've got I've got that in the listing. Um, uh, but yeah, you would normally want to want to know that. Like if I did a, an open house in my neighborhood, you know, the community center is right over here. There's a kid playground over here. There's two walking trails over here. Um, so yeah, it, we, we definitely should have known that. Um, and I had asked the the owner for that and she didn't really know because she's never lived there. Um, and I had driven around, but I didn't really necessarily see anything. I, I imagine there is a clubhouse, but um, I didn't I didn't really see it. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, ideally you would want to know all that stuff because that's, that's huge selling points, right? Like, you know, there's an elementary school a mile down the, the road, like that'd be, you know, perfect for you and your little family or whatever the case may be. But yeah, ideally, you know, more than what, what we knew for, for the one we had on Saturday. Um, she just didn't know a ton about it. Open house objections. Um, oh, this is for CMA. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure why this one is in here. Um, make appointments. So um, this morning, I'm going to go through these leads and see if I can schedule them to go back out to the house to do a private showing or if they want to see any other houses in the area, right? So I'm going to introduce myself again. Um, and thank them for coming out, ask them if they had any questions about that house. And then I'm going to try to schedule something for, for all six of them to see if I can get something else from them. Um, I don't know if they, they will, but it's, it's, you know, it's worth a quick email and phone call to each person. Um, so I'll do that this morning and send it out and um, see what kind of response we get. But there's no point in collecting the information if you're not going to follow up. Because again, this house will sell and it will sell from maybe this open house, but also sell from probably someone scheduling an own private showing. I, ideally, these are these are free leads from an open house, right? So that's that's your main objective. So make sure that you are following up with these people more than once. Use these objections. Add to the open house. Um, obviously, return the house as you found it. Um, the second that, that you left, I called the sellers and, uh, gave her kind of a rundown on how it went, asked some questions of stuff that we were getting questions on. Um, I didn't write a note because we're doing one the next day and I, I did not collect the signs because we were doing an open house the following day. Um, but these are definitely things that you, that you definitely want to do. So, um, make sure all the lights are off. That's the biggest pet peeve of people after an open house is that their lights are off. So. Um, make sure they do that, especially a vacant house because they, they might be out of town like this person is. Uh, so they come home a week later and all the lights are on. They're going to be pissed at you because you, you held the open house. Um, but keeping the sellers up to date. So after every open house, call them right away and say, hey, great news. We had this many people. And whether it was 30 people or two people or 10 people, great news. We had interested people come out, right? And that's the feedback that, that you want to give. Right. We could have, I could have easily called her and said, Hey, we only had eight people came through. Um, I don't know if anyone's going to buy. Right. That would have, that would have been terrible to say that to somebody. Right. Um, she was very excited when I got off the phone with her because we had good news. We had several people that were very interested and it was busy almost the whole time, which was, which was nice. Um, 
So, and then she called again. Uh, we talked, we talked again yesterday. Um, at like 101, she called me before I even had a chance to talk to Arena about how it went. She said, How'd it go? Right. So they're they're sitting on the edge of their seat waiting for results. So be be ready to to give them an update um and and try to make it positive, obviously. Um it's kind of what I'm doing this morning. Send thank you notes uh, to all the people that come. Um report to the listing agent if if it's not you, obviously. Um all these people are going straight into my CRM and they will be added to my drip campaigns, right? So if I call them today and they don't answer or respond to email, then end of the week, I'll reach out to them again and then next week and then next week. And then, then I'll put them on a bi-weekly then, you know, every other month. Um, so again, uh, kind of our, our one habit, right? Is adding, adding new people. That's the, the key to real estate is constantly making calls, adding people and putting notes in your CRM. So Tanya, have you have you started putting people in your CRM yet? Have you used it yet? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. That's a no. That is a solid hey, no, it's Brian. It's like halfway. I'm getting it. their information, but it's like, I don't know exactly what they need yet. So it's the whole communicating with them. As far as like what goes in the CRM? Yeah, it's like, like, so I got their email, but I don't know exactly what they're, like they're not reaching out what they're looking for. I don't want to just like what their budget is or whatever. They don't really know. So it's like, um, yeah, I mean, you could still I don't add be those. sending them houses that they fall in love with, but they, they can't afford, you know? So it's just a whole before baby. But you're still adding them into the CRM? Yes. Yeah. But they're not getting anything from me yet. Like no emails yet. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't just send people like random houses either. Right. But just, I mean, I would still reach out to them like, Hey, it was like great, great meeting the other day at the park or, Thanks for buying some of my bread or, you know, whatever, however you met them, right. It was, it was nice seeing you at church or the gym or however you, however you got these contacts, you know, I just wanted to see if you're interested in looking anything, let me know what area and price point you're looking for. And I'm happy to send you some stuff. Yeah. Or if you want to meet up for coffee one day next week, let's, let's do that. And we can just, we can talk. Right. Yeah. Um, so some of them are looking to rent instead of to buy, you know? So it's like one of those, is it because they want to rent because they don't think that they could afford and they need to talk to maybe like a lender and like go over like, uh, what is that planning? Right. So that, that's always a big thing as well. So I mean, sometimes it is the long game, right? Whether it's, they're going to rent and then, you know, 12, 13 months from now is when they buy. Um, but also a lot of people don't understand that they can actually buy right now. And that buying is actually their monthly payments probably going to be much cheaper um, and it doesn't cost them as much out of pocket as they think. So if they haven't bought a house before, most people assume that they you know they're putting twenty percent down, right? And for I don't know eighty or ninety percent of Americans, that's probably very hard to do, right? Mm -hmm. But we show them that hey, we can probably get you a house for three and a half percent down. And if you, if that's a problem, we can get you a seller credit and probably you know, put half that down. Um, and if you're worried about your credit, like, let's just run some numbers. It doesn't hurt. And just to see, you might be surprised at what you can afford, right? Um, so a lot of times people rent just because they don't know. Not that they're ignorant. They just they just don't know. And, and the perception is that they probably can't because they don't have perfect credit or or what the case may be. But so, yeah, a lot of that would be just, you know, hey, I'm happy to help you find something to rent. Uh, and then whenever you buy, hopefully in a year, I'm happy to help you. Let me ask you a question. If I could get you in front of a lender... And they could get you approved, then you can start building equity in the house now. Would you be interested? Right. And that's kind of the conversation because every person that you're talking to, the sooner that they buy a house, the sooner they're building equity and making money, basically. Right. So it's a it's a good conversation to have with them um, and finding out why why they're thinking about renting versus versus buying. But put them in the CRM. Sorry. but all my like all my conversations and everything i do is through my crm so you know as opposed to you like i'll pull up this lady for example
so for example, this is this is my CRM. So this is this is the client that we met with. Um, Nivia is her name. Um, but you know, I talked to her yesterday, um, a text message that I sent sent to her. Um, she sent me an email. Like, see, it's all, it's all coming through here. Every every different type of communication. Um, so even even like my text, like I'm texting her through through my CRM. Like it's not it's not coming through my personal cell phone. Um, and the reason I do that is once you have hundreds of different you know potential you know, leads, trying to track all that information in your phone, and then like you see that you've emailed them on here, but have you talked to them? Like when you do everything inside of your CRM it makes your life so much easier. I mean, I can go back from months and months in here of communication with her, every email, every text, every phone calls, you know, recorded and in here. Um, I, I know in the beginning, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to necessarily use that, but I can tell you once you're talking to more than five people, 10 people, a hundred people, it is the only way that you'll ever stay organized is by using your CRM. So um, building that habit now is going to make you so much more organized because it's harder to do it, to go back and change it. So, um, every single day you guys should be logging into your CRM, even if you have one client or 10 clients, like just get in that habit of every single day, go in your CRM, look at your leads, try to add somebody every day. Uh, if not at least, you know, several people every week. Um, and the more that you do that, the, the better off you'll be. You use follow up, boss. Do you always like um, go from your uh, computer, or does it have an app where you could still text from the app? It has an app as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whether I'm on my my iPad, my iPhone, or on my computer, it's it's pretty seamless. Um, so I can make I can be emailing them and on the phone with them at the same time. Um, but yeah, I mean that the. the Serum that we use with the company Sync um, is is very good as well. And that's one that, that comes with. So it it is it just happens that I I use Follow Boss in the past, uh, and I'm just very comfortable with it. Um, and for my team, it's easier for me to con control like the my agents on my team, uh, which is why I use it. Um, but the if, if if that was not the case, then I would use Sync. Uh, Sync is 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 a very good CRM as well, uh, but. You just want to get used to using as much as possible. So um, does anybody have any questions about open houses or concerns or thoughts or? Yeah, it's super quiet today. Nothing. Jackie, you're going to ask for an open house this week? I'm working on it. Um, I would like to actually shadow someone soon. I'm gonna look into that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and your first open house or two or three is gonna be kind of what, what, what Tanya did. I mean, she she basically just shadowed me, but she she did a lot of it. like she didn't, you know, she I didn't make her like make the flyers and put the signs out and stuff. Um, I kind of did all that stuff and she showed up and then but she she got to interact with all the clients and 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 do a lot of it while she was there. But that that's what your first couple open houses will be. Um so don't feel like you have to do all that and put any you know money into it. Um, it's really just about showing up the day of and just just helping out, uh, but also just get getting used to that interactions and, and seeing how other agents talk to their potential clients. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if you guys don't have anything else, I guess I'll get running. Enjoy your President's Day. Um, <laughs> see you. See you next weekend. Uh, next week. Um, if you guys need anything in the meantime, uh, obviously you guys are always able to to open up. Uh, Michelle, yeah, there's um, yeah, so just the 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 Realty One Group Revolution, um, it should be in there. I will, if you're not already in there, I can try to send you an invite to it, um, and then also, you know, just just make sure that you're asking your your mentor as well, like, because we have a group chat with just like the mentors. So anytime, like, if I have a showing that I want someone that can shadow me on, you know, we'll send it to each other and say, hey, well, I need this agent needs to do some showings or. Uh, whatever. So, um, yeah, make sure you're asking your mentor as well. But I'll, I'll make sure that you're invited to that Facebook group so you can be on there as well. So. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Uh, should I post it in there? Yeah, so they're, they're awesome times posted in that. Um, 
yeah so that's that's oftentimes what i posted um but yeah I'll, I'll have her send you an invite to it or i'll try to invite you from to the group as well so. all right guys well have a good bye. monday go do some real estate stuff and we'll see you next week yeah bye bye guys Thank you.